turn in your Bible to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. I'm going to read verses 1 through 8, then verse 15 through 19. 1 through 8, then 15 through 19. Please stand on and read God's Word. They came over to the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. When he would come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I had to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not, for he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And in verse 15 it said that they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed of the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Mm -hmm. And they that saw it told them how to fell to him that was possessed of the devil and also concerning the swine. They began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he had come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but said to him, Go home to thy friends. Tell them how great thing the Lord has done for thee, and have compassion on thee. Father, we love you. Thank you for your word tonight. God, help us apply it to us and this church and every one of our families. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. So, <clears throat> what if while my wife and I were on vacation, as we were walking through Walmart, uh, looking for another bargain on a UK hat to wear to the football game? I refused to give $25 for one at Coles, amen? <laughs> So we spent, I don't know, probably 30, 40 minutes going three or four different places and ended up getting one at uh, Walmart for how much was it? $12. Amen? There you go. And as we were walking out, we, with my daughter, what if we were to run into a young girl about 26 years old, I found out. Everything from here to here was solid cut. She'd cut herself all the way around, just almost like a ring. She had literally cut herself so bad. And uh, that verse just came screaming uh, at me because I saw that. And I found out she had been saved about a year prior to that prior to meeting her the other night with my daughter. She goes to my daughter's church. Amen. And uh, my daughter's 45. Uh, she's not an aged woman yet, but she's getting close. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I asked my daughter about her and I asked her her name. My wife and I spoke with her. She was at church Sunday worshiping. But she made a statement to my daughter as we were leaving that night. And she said, oh, she said okay, Mom. Which indicates that my daughter is trying to help her straighten up her life. Amen. 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 And so she said it kind of sarcastically, but she knows my daughter loves her. Yes. And there's another, two other girls that my daughter ministered to that really blessed our heart, but she is the one that that really grabbed our attention. And so. <clears throat> I guess the whole message could be wrapped up in one thing tonight. You could almost, I could almost make a statement and say amen and have an invitation. Those of us that are believers and have been so for a long time, we expect those that have been saved even at only as much as a year to behave as though they've been saved a long, long time. And it just doesn't happen. 
Amen. Right. As bad as we wanted for them, we wanted for them worse than they wanted for their sin. It just doesn't happen that way. First Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 says, And I, brethren, cannot speak to you as spiritual, but as the carnal, even as the babes in Christ. I've fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto, in other words, for so far, you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. So Paul is saying, look, there are, there are folks that actually are believers, but they're still on the milk of the word. And, and, and as much as you and I want them to see, to get their entire life straightened out, everything in them completely serving the Lord and doing all the things that they're supposed to do. They have to be under the meat of the word eventually to change it. You can't expect an infant to eat a big T-bone tonight, do you? No. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> and the song came ringing home to me as I saw her and I thought about this old song. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, sun and earth, and Jupiter and Mars. How lovingly patient he must be. But he's still working on me. <laughs> Amen. I sang that this morning. And God revealed to me things for me that he's still working on. Amen. I'm 68 years old and got saved when I was 15. I ain't there yet. Maybe you are. I'm not. And in Mark chapter 4, look there, and I just turned back a chapter. It describes some folks that came under the word of God, heard the word of God preached. And he talks about that there went out a sword to sow in verse 3, and it came to pass as he sowed. Some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. When the sun was up, it was scorched because it had no root, and it withered away. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it and yielded no fruit. Others fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60. And some a hundred. What has occurred here, and he goes on to explain all the different things that Satan does about the word in verse 15, that when the word is sown, that immediately, these are that are sown by the wayside, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their heart. That's verse 15. Verse 16, the one that was sown on stony ground, says immediately, Receive the word with gladness, but have no root in themselves, and so endure for a time afterward when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Mm -hmm. And by the way, to add to verse 17, just to, just to make you and I uh, aware of what God has done for us, this, this very week, I think it was October the 6th, in 1526, when William Tyndale had translated the Bible from Hebrew into English, the Old Testament, especially the first four books, or maybe five books, I was at first, at first five books, and also did the New Testament, he was strangled to death and burned at the stake so you and I could have a Bible to read tonight. Right. So the word's offensive to Satan. Then he said in verse 18, these are they sown among thorns, such as hear the word. Cares of this world, the secretness of riches, the lust of other things, enter again, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. And in verse 20, these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, receive it, bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. Now Satan immediately steals it from the others, but there's a group that truly got the word of God in their heart, but the thing that I wanted to point out tonight, I hope that that's not us, but sometimes those that bear fruit a hundred times more than what they receive, Sometimes they immediately expect those that only bear fruit 60 times to do better. And the ones that only bear fruit 60 times expect the ones that only bear fruit 30 times. In other words, 
there's a sliding scale there that folks begin to get judgmental and critical of those that are not where you are at spiritually. Amen? Amen. And it bothers you and it eats at you because they are not where you want them to be. God makes it plain that everybody grows at a different rate and a different fruit that comes out of them. But immediately we expect those things to change. Now when we get saved, we get the Holy Spirit, we also get, well, the fruits of the Spirit is long-suffering. In Galatians 5, 22, and verse 23, it says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and long-suffering. Right. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Right. In Ephesians 4, 1 and 2, it said, I therefore, the prisoner of God, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you were called with all lowliness, meekness, here's that word again, long-suffering, forbearing one another in love. Mm -hmm. That word <coughs> long-suffering, when you look it up in the Greek, Greek it means long-enduring. It also means this word, lenience. Spirited, long patience. Isn't it amazing how that we don't have near as much patience with others expecting them to grow to the point we want to see them at. But God is long-suffering to us all the time. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. 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 We do. We do. And it doesn't happen overnight, even though they are changed immediately and made into a new creature, according to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. <laughs> Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The minute that happened to somebody... We as believers in Jesus Christ, we expect everything about them to be exactly perfect. Well, yes, they've been saved and every sin they've ever committed is gone. But I'm telling you, there has to be a work done in their heart. And God help us. They have to get under the word of God to grow. Right. Right. Amen? Yeah. That's why some that was sown and nothing gets accomplished. And the first time they have hard times, they run backwards. Amen? And I'm going to ask the question, are we the righteous judges? Are we that righteous that we can judge people? Are we that good that we can do that? Are we that perfect that we can do that? No. no. But we expect it of them. Part of it, I believe, is we're so excited for them. I can see the compassion in my daughter's eyes the other night. She fussed about her a little bit, and my wife explained some things to her to help her understand. You know, she's been saved for one year. Right. There's folks here that have been saved only a year or two. Mm -hmm. And we're looking around and getting frustrated at it. And I do too. Yeah. If you want to be honest, let's be honest. I do too. Yeah, that's right. I expect more out of them than that. I'm telling you what, they don't get under the word, they can't grow. Can't grow. It's impossible according to the word of God. Right. John 7, 24 says, judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. In other words, on what we see. 2 Peter 2, 22 says, but it happened then according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the sow that was washing her wallowing in the mire. Can I ask you something? Have you ever been there, done that? Or for some of you right now that you're battling the same sin your entire life, even after your salvation, there's, there's that sin, as the Bible calls it in Hebrews 12, 1, so let us lay aside every weight and sin which does easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. That word beset. It means exactly this. It means to thwart the, the direction and the progress of a runner. It talks about me. It talks actually means to surround a runner as he's trying to make some progress, and you surround him, and he can't go any further at that point. And it, it, it's all the time. It's all the time. Some of you and me too. I still have some of the same battles. Since I was 15. Amen. 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 
So is, is it right for us to expect more out of them than, than what we're doing? It takes more patience than, than yeah. it takes godly patience. You have to yeah. ask for it. And it comes through perseverance of trials and tribulations. That they'll try you. That's right. Amen. Amen. But it eats at us. Because you love them. Mm. You love them. You want to see better for them than that. But every single one of us have gone back to the very thing that we said we would never, ever, ever do. God, I'll never do that again. But yet we do. Amen. Mm -hmm. So then do we have the right to tell anybody you, you're not where you ought to be? You better be real careful of that one finger. That's mm -hmm. right. Amen. See here? You see me? I got pointed back at me? Three. All the rest has been put right there in this foam. I guess I'm hitchhiking. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. We better be real careful. Yes, sir. Even the Apostle Paul that wrote most of the New Testament, and I'm moving on. In Philippians chapter 3, verses 13, 14, 15. Now, Paul hadn't died yet, and he hadn't been resurrected. And part of that chapter is what he's talking about, that he's not, he's not in heaven yet. Nope. But in the meantime, he tells you how we're supposed to behave. He said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind, which means you're past reaching forth under those things which are before. Mm -hmm. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect, mm -hmm. ooh, be careful with that word, right. be thus minded, and if anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Now, when you look up that word perfect in the Greek right there, here's exactly what it means. Complete in your growth. So Paul's saying, look, if you're not complete in your growth, that you think that you are, and God reveals to you something otherwise, in other words, you're not, he's still working on me. That's right, that's right. To make me what I ought to be. Mm -hmm. Took him just a week to make the moon and the stars. Mm -hmm. Right. He's still working on me. He's still working on every single one of us. Amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. it is. I've had many folks tell me, some, Brother Michael, when do we ever arrive? I said, when the lid is shut on my casket. That's right. That's right. In the meantime, my battle seen it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did everything I do. I battle it. In all kinds of ways. And you do too, if you'll be honest with God. Amen. Now, <clears throat> There's no other way to grow than in the Word of God. Now we get frustrated, not only individually, but we get frustrated as church bodies when we don't see folks come along like we think they should. Would you agree with that? Yes. Yeah? To be honest, it aggravates us. We get frustrated. We, get, we want them to do better because we do love them and we do care them. But we have to be careful of this one thing. They need God worse than they need our criticism. They need our prayers worse than they need our condemnation. If I prayed more than I condemned or got aggravated and criticized, there might be some changes made in people's lives. Maybe that applies to you too. Amen. Philippians 1, 6. And I'm closing. I'm getting there. Being confident. Mm -hmm. When you use that word being, it means a continual thing. Mm -hmm. Being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ. Wow, what if we lift it up to God to change that guy, that one thing that bothers you about him, and you bake it in prayer and say, God, I know you know about what he's up to, and you know what I'm up to. I'm asking you to work on me, but I'm also asking you to work on that individual. You promised in your word right here that you began a good work and you're going to perform it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now here's the thing. You can't make them receive what God wants to do in their lives. Amen? Amen. Yeah. You can't make them do that. Mm -hmm. And you want to. And I want to. Amen? Right. 
when I grew up and I didn't get to something when dad wanted it done, right here, right in the middle of my Levi's, right there. Amen. Hurry up, boy. Go. Get. Go do it. Amen. He wanted that. God didn't work that way. <coughs> The Bible says, oh, wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. We don't like to wait. Amen? Amen. When the light turns green and somebody's sitting in front of you, if they don't go within two seconds, what do you do immediately? Are they going to sit there all day? <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Or is it just me? It's no. just me, Amy. It's just me. I'm talking about one second. Right. They ain't turned green. I'm sitting there, and of course, my truck I've got now that sits above people, and I'm just looking down on top of them. I get close enough, I can see the kind of hair do they've got. I get right up in them. Amen. And I want them to get out of my way. And I'm old and retired. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> we expect the same thing spiritually. Get on with it. How does this happen? Here's your answer. 1 Peter 2, verse 2. As newborn babes mm -hmm. desire the sincere milk of the word that you may do what? Grow. That you may grow. Mm -hmm. That's our part of our job as a church. Is to give them a desire to get into the word right after they're saved. And then begin to grow. One day, one service, one prayer meeting, one kingdom men meeting, one women's meeting together. Just one after the other, at the other, at the other. That they may grow. Does that happen through a fishing trip? I don't know. Does it happen through a little boy's thing? I don't know. Does it happen through some ball game somebody puts together? I don't know. Does it happen at Halloween when all the kids come around and give them candy? I don't know. Does it happen at a dinner? Does it happen at a senior breakfast? I don't know. Does it happen this and that and that and that? Don't be afraid to be creative to get them under the Word of God. Amen. That's right. And some folks are not going to share what's on their heart in a group sitting like this. They're just not going to do it. But when God lays it upon your heart, if you come up with a creative way to get people together, you're not going to ever hear this pastor be against it. As long as you share the word of God somewhere, somehow. But it takes that fellowship first. You're not going to cram the entire New Testament down somebody's throat. Amen? Yeah. Sometimes you have to create something to get folks to sit under the Word. Let the Word do its job. I don't know what that means all the time. But it's out there and it's available to us. So you're the only one that knows where you're at between yourself and God. And you've got somebody that you're being impatient with. Maybe you need to come and pray for them tonight. And maybe you need to be saved tonight. Maybe you're at home watching by YouTube or Facebook and you've never been born again, you need to be saved so you can become that new creature in Christ. And God will begin to do the work on you. This local body will love on you and reach out to you and minister to you. But if you do not get in the Word of God, you will not grow. And it won't be long that you'll be wondering, what in the world did I do? Did I just ask God in my heart just to get me out of my trouble? And I got out of my trouble, and then you forget about Christ. That's right. The Bible says, Godly sorrow. Yes. Godly sorrow. That's what it takes. It leads to repentance. Not to be repented of, but to solve the world worth death. Godly sorrow. Maybe you have somebody you need to pray for. You come. Like I say, if you're not saved, you need to be godly sorrowful for your sins. Tell him you're sorry. Ask him to forgive you, and I promise you, the Bible says, he that comes to me, I'll in no wise cast out. He cannot turn you down. He will accept you just as you are. You come if you have a need to.